Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the new Immersion RC RF Power Meter V2. Now, as a reviewer, tools like this are very useful, but for the average FPVer, is this worth getting? The answer is yes. So, for the last couple of years I've been using this guy, this is the V1, and it's out of reach for a lot of people because it's quite expensive. I think they say the retail price is $149, but when you add on shipping and custom taxes and things like that, it costs more. And it's a little bit outdated compared to this version as well, I should say. So there's no built-in battery, so you've got a little DC jack there, and I tend to use these fat shark batteries and it powers up so we don't have a backlight on it there and it's very straightforward though we've got the attenuation so there's no built-in attenuator here an attenuator is needed because the power that your VTX is outputting can actually damage the components in here so they reduce that and then they adjust it with calculation so this is a external 30 dB attenuator and yeah it does work you plug it into your VTX so if you're using a SMA connector and then it will tell you the power in dB or milliwatts you can change that and you can see there it says frequency 5.8 you can change this so it does support I think down to yeah 35 megahertz and the new one does that as well the difference is on the new one you can select a closer frequency and I'll show you that in a little bit so yeah this thing does a whole lot more it's cheaper I think $79 something like that it's got a built-in Lion battery so it's a 10440 3.7 volt battery and it charges via this USB 2 connector here and you can just slide this away and you can access the battery so you can replace the battery easily if I could just get the cover off there yep so that's easily replaceable this has got a built-in attenuator so no need for this there is a caveat to that though can you see it's got a little warning there it says plus 30 dBm max so the built-in attenuator is going to be fine up to 500 milliwatt however they are saying if you want to test a higher power than that for longer than 30 seconds you will need to add another external attenuator so if you are a reviewer and looking at getting this then I would probably suggest that you get an external attenuator as well because you can go in there and adjust the attenuation in DB and then you can test up to whatever this guy for you is going to be more about checking that your VTX is outputting the power that it should do because VTXs they can get damaged you know if you run them without an antenna or you've had it for a long time they do wear out and this guy will tell you what this is outputting in milliwatts so compared to what it should from stock and also DBM as well if you are more into RF kind of stuff because RF guys they they only read in DB not milliwatts so it's also good as well if you are flying with other people it's best to stick to 25 milliwatt if you are doing that or low power and you can very quickly check that with this meter and I'll show you how to do that so this is the box that it comes in and you get this little linear antenna here it's SMA so if you are dealing with RPSMA stuff then you can get one of these little adapters here to convert from SMA to RPSMA you also get this little pigtail here as well so this is for screwing onto there and then this will screw into your copter so yeah, there are a couple of ways to use this, so I will show you how to do that. So to turn this guy on, we have the power button there, and then we've got an OLED screen here. It's flickering because of the sync of the frame rate of this camera. It doesn't flicker in real life. So we've got our battery level there. It's a full battery. You should get eight hours of use from a full charge. And then you can see we have our 
power in dB and then power in milliwatts and then we have the frequency down there as well. So if I press on this little joystick button here you can see that we can change the megahertz there so I think if I go on there and then up and down. So this is running on Fat Shark Channel 1 which is 5740 so what you can do is you can see it goes up in increments of 50 this time so you can get closer to the frequency than before then we've got average mode and then you can see attenuation it's not db because we have the built-in attenuator so if i was to stick another attenuator on it there for example this one then i would go up to 30 db the span this is for the built-in oscilloscope and i'll show you that in a little bit so it actually powers off automatically after five minutes I think it is and then we've got the back button to go back to the main screen so if we want to check the power output of this copter what I'm gonna do just unscrew the antenna here and I'm also going to have to use the RPSMA adapter so I've got that here so I'll just screw that in yeah be careful with that otherwise you know if the pins aren't touching each other then it's like running without an antenna basically now I've got this set to 25 milliwatt it might read a little bit higher at first and then it generally comes down as it's been switched on a little while but also I believe the fat shark band it has slightly higher output than race band so let's just plug this in so yeah you can see there hang on let me just make sure all this is tight up oh, there we go so you can see it's actually outputting 55 milliwatt there by the way this copter I'm going to be doing a build on it this is the HGLRC F440 stack and yeah on the fat shark channel it's actually outputting 50 milliwatt there so that is how we can check it directly and if I go into there and if I go into race band it will sit at 25 milliwatt okay so I've switched to race band there and it's saying 34 milliwatt but now if I go in here and yeah so 658 I think it is and go back look at that that was almost perfect 25 milliwatt there so yeah that is working nicely so the next thing that you can do is you can actually test the power output when it's not directly connected so let me show you how to do that let me just disconnect all of this and put the antennas back so the next mode it's more useful for race directors and it's a way of giving a rough indication of what the copter is outputting so you don't have to disconnect the antenna you can just go up to all of the copters on the start line and you can see if any of them are outputting more than they should be and they call it scully mode i think scully is a commentator for multi gp so if we just move this joystick along so that's the scope mode and we'll take a look at that in a bit so you can see here that we've got a dbm reading and the idea is that because we know that this is outputting 25 milliwatt if we plug this in here and then put this up to there and get it as close as possible I'll just wait for it to turn on so let's, hopefully you can you can see that I want to make sure you can read the numbers so what we can do is put this as close as possible and then we can center it like that so zero is defined so then if anything is outputting less you'll see this little meter go down now as I get further away or if it's outputting more then it will shoot up and that is the idea of this mode you find a copter that is outputting 25 milliwatt and then when you put this up to it there it should be just slightly above or below or, or maybe the same it is going to vary of course because VTX is they do have different power outputs and also antennas as well so it's actually a good way to check how your antenna is performing as well as a non-racer 
So now if I change the power output of this, then it should go right up there. So let's get and do that. Okay, so I've increased the power output there, and yeah, it's going above there by 8 dB. So yeah, fairly useful. I haven't increased the power output much, just to 100 milliwatts. So if someone's blasting at 600 milliwatt, then that would shoot right up there. But yes, a really nice feature, I think. So the last feature is the scope and it can actually be used to see if LBT is being used on a Tyrannus or you can check the packets that are being sent by any transmitter and you can also find where the antenna is as well. So if we just put that over there and you can see quite difficult to get on the camera and I can change the resolution here as well so I can zoom in there and we can take a look at the packets so this thing is really feature packed it's a nice price and I can't see any reason not to buy it so I'll put a link in the description and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers